I really like buying weird, terrible things from the internet. Says nobody ever. <laughs> Other than me. I've made a lot of videos like this. Kim and I buy weird accessories for our Switches sometimes. And I buy third-party Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons and controllers sometimes. And this video is kind of a mesh of both. Minus Kim. She is like two walls over if it makes you feel any better. She's kind of here. I have bought and spent way too much money on weird and wacky Joy-Cons and Pro Controller type of things you'll have to just get into it because these are all very varied some of them are very ugly some of them i'm very hopeful for <laughs> and then some of them are just why 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 so if you're new around here hi hello please subscribe and if you're already subscribed how you been good to see you again you see what you get when you subscribe to my channel you get a second greeting before we get started you might be asking how do i afford to buy stupid things like this well with the help of sponsors like in today's video expressvpn if you've been watching me for a while you know that i've been using expressvpn for a while at least a couple years especially when i was in japan recently when i was over there i didn't want to miss out on my favorite shows on netflix hulu you name it in fact you can't even watch hulu in countries outside of the usa in fact you might even be from somewhere else thinking what the heck is hulu and this is how you'll find out download expressvpn Drop yourself in the US of A, download some Hulu, and start binge watching The Simpsons, Bob Burgers, or Chernobyl. One of those things is not like the other. <laughs> but of course, a good VPN isn't just for watching things outside of the country. It's also a security measure to protect your own privacy. When you're connected to an unencrypted internet network on your phone, computer, tablet, TV, you're sending out so much of your information just out there unprotected. A VPN or a virtual private network creates a security tunnel between your device and the internet. It has faster speeds because ExpressVPN invests in premium servers, 24 seven customer support, it is super strong stupidly easy to use. It is the top rated VPN provider and it doesn't store any of your information like some of those other VPNs might do. So if all this sounds good to you, and it really should, you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by clicking my link in the description. Aren't I nice? I had nothing to do with it. This was all ExpressVPN, so thank them. I don't know where to start with all these controllers. I was gonna save these till last because Holy moly, these are ugly. But I just realized that uh, I tried testing them earlier and they didn't work because I had to charge them. So I'm really quickly gonna put these on charge now that I've remembered that. So far, probably my favorite third-party Joy-Cons I have found are these, the Hori Split Pad Pro. Big, bulky, cheap feeling, but actually really nice to hold, which simulate the feeling of holding an actual official Pro controller, but these I've been really excited for. They essentially are GameCube controller Joy-Cons. So I really like that they didn't need to be charged up. They actually registered when I clicked them in. You can charge these by just putting them on the Switch and docking it. There's a lot of things running through my brain right now. One, this feels nothing like a GameCube controller. I'm sorry. Sorry, the actual mold is obviously nothing like a GameCube controller. But the layout of these Joy-Cons obviously replicate a GameCube controller. The first thing is this toggle. It has that same weird ring ribbon. That feels a lot like the GameCube controller. And obviously the C-Stick, while it is a lot bigger, it actually has the same snap as the C-Stick on a GameCube controller. So that is bringing back nostalgia right now. But it's not the nicest feeling stick to have as the camera stick. And then, obviously, we have this weird button layout of Y, A, B, and X. What? What does this correlate to? So we'll press X, which should bring up the menu. Okay, the button mapping is the same. It might take a little bit to wrap my head around trying to figure out what button I'm trying to press, but I don't think it would take too much brain power, especially because the button letters match up. The toggles feel great. They don't feel like a GameCube controller. I mean, the GameCube controller has that big squish down. If anything, I actually think these feel nicer than regular Joy-Cons. Yeah, I actually like the click to these a lot more. The D-pad sounds nice. It feels great. And also, I'm now realizing you don't have black Joy-Cons. So this actually looks really cool as a complete unit. I love the way that it dips in. It gives the Switch a whole new look and a nostalgic look at the same time. Cool. And if I saw someone on the bus with these, I'd definitely be asking where they got them from. All right, I wanna jump 
straight in. I want to jump straight in. By the way, if you saw this on the table, I already talked about this in my Dragon Quest video. I just thought that because it is such a weird and wacky controller that it had a place on the table today. So if you want to see me fumble around on this thing, I'll leave that review down below. All right, I have been really excited for this. You can probably already tell that I was so excited I couldn't even wait. And I dug it out and I threw the GameCube layout on it already. But I waited to throw on any other layouts. And I was really curious as to how some of these work. Like the NES one only has two buttons and then the N64 one has like six buttons. How is that gonna work? Okay, so here's the controller. Again, I already pulled this out earlier. Again, I already fiddled around with this, so it feels really good. I like these plastic grips. These triggers, they actually, they feel quality. They feel like metal and like weighted, but there's something about them that I don't, I can't really explain it. They just, they don't feel good. They feel like they're trying to replicate the Xbox One triggers, but it just doesn't feel the same. These top buttons, I hate. If you actually just press it, it's fine. Like if you give it a good hard press, but you get so used to the Joy-Cons being so light and dainty, like you really don't have to put that much press pressure on them. And if you try that with these, I actually found myself going to like click it and not putting enough pressure on it and not clicking it and nothing happening and me having to like double down and do it again. And that was really annoying. Everything else about this is perfectly fine. It's a perfectly fine controller. It doesn't feel first party quality. You can tell it's third party, but it feels good. But the main attraction here is to shove your fingers into these little gaps. And you got to really... Oh, I'm gonna break my fingernails. This is a complaint. It doesn't need to be this hard to get the freaking thing off. It's almost. <laughs> All right. As we saw the GameCube one was on there. We also have the NES layout and then we have the N64 layout. So let's go ahead and throw on the NES one. I think it's probably the coolest one. Now this is really clever. So each one of these have like a little pattern Thing that presses into these connectors here and that's how it knows which one you're using also I completely forgot there was a super wow that is the coolest one I lied all right we'll put this in <laughs> and there you go now you have a two button layout now they tell you what to use all these for when I read it it says it's for the switch but it also said to use this for the NES games this for the GameCube games and then this for the N64 games that's what it says in there the <laughs> last time I looked I don't think I'm gonna be actually needing either of these so in this mode you're not going to be able to play most games, but it's going to be perfect for playing Nintendo Online because you only need the two buttons. It doesn't register the others anyway. What I'm curious about is what these individual C buttons do. So as soon as you put this in, it registers which type you're switching over to. I'm going to press the top C stick. Nothing. Oh. So the top two right buttons on the C-Stick don't do anything. If you pretend these two buttons aren't here, you essentially have A, B, Y, and X. So it's flipped everything backwards. Oh, okay. <laughs> I would be more impressed if there was 64 games on the Switch and this actually was, you know what I mean? But there's not. So, I mean, I can't really fault them. It's just weird that they made those two buttons like dead buttons. Really, the only reason to get this is for the NES style. I think that's a really cool idea you get like a full controller it kind of feels like a pro controller but you you know you just have these two buttons and it's stylized i'm just kind of disappointed with the lack of effort in the designs but i mean <laughs> so this is the 8-bit do light gamepad 8-bit do by the way if you don't know 8-bit do does have really good quality all this other stuff on the table is made by who knows what who knows who who knows where who knows how, who knows probably all gonna break in a week but 8-bit do is going to last you so as i said we should unless i ran the battery dry nope okay so this is designed for the switch light I don't really know why, because the Switch Lite doesn't have a kickstand, but uh, if you don't want to use it on the Lite, it just works perfectly. Now, why it has two D-pads? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, okay, so I do know why. You don't really want to stick poking its way out of here. I mean, you kind of want to keep this thing compact and little. You don't want the controller being bigger than the actual console. So they just throw on two D-pads left and right. And I mean, it does make a lot of sense. And other than that, it works like just a little teeny itty bitty controller. Your bumper buttons are just these tiny little squares. I love this little thing. It is adorable. With the Switch Lite, I don't understand its practical use. But as far as taking an extra controller around, if you really hate taking off the Joy-Cons or maybe you're going somewhere where you want to play two-player, 
Now I figured out the purpose. It took me a second, but I got there. If you're taking your Switch Lite to a friend's house or your Switch to a friend's house and you want to just slam a controller in your pocket to hand to your friend. And then obviously if you're taking your Switch Lite around and you want to be compact as possible, two players, you know. I love this little thing. It just feels quality. It feels like a Nintendo product. Like 8-Bit Dude does things right. What the heck? I kind of get maybe what they were going for. I mean, it kind of adds that level of comfort that the split pro pad pro bleh. Like it honestly does feel the same. And it, I mean, this part feels sturdy enough, but just wait, cause it, it gets pretty bad. So you put it in like this, it kind of slots down and clicks in with the USB-C right in the bottom. At least it automatically connects. Like it's all just gonna work right away. This thing was off before. My biggest issue is the fact that of this. I don't think it'll fall out. I'm kind of scared to really give it a shot, but it doesn't It doesn't fit in nicely. I, I think the use of like rubber inserts like the Satisfy Grip utilizes would have gone a long way to just secure this thing and make you feel a lot safer about having your Switch in there. But I guess it's not a big deal at the end of the day. There is bigger issues at work here. I kind of like how massive these analog sticks are. They feel like they have so much room to spin around. They also kind of feel like I could easily break them, but I don't think they will break. They're just, they're just really big. The D-pad is trash. This is the worst D-pad I think I've ever felt. It's spongy. Down and right feel like they just sink into the controller. The top and the left feel like they have give and a click behind them and they don't go all the way in, but the bottom right feels spongy. The buttons also feel a little like, well, B and Y feel good, X just feels loose, and A feels good too, so I guess just X feels loose. It's just really rattly and cheap feeling, and I don't understand the purpose. It's kind of like getting third-party Joy-Cons, but you're afraid of losing one of them, so you kind of want this big bar that goes across it. It kind of makes it look like a weird tablet gaming system from about 10 years ago. The Leap Pad, that's what it's reminding me of. It's like they've taken a Leap Pad and they've sprayed it black to kind of make it look cool. I will say it's comfortable. There's something about this friggin' thing that can't be beat though. And I know what it is. It's more comfortable than this and you get to use the actual Nintendo hardware. I do love all of this. I love all these different things, all their different looks, aesthetics. That's the thing I really like about the Switch and Nintendo. You get all these cool accessories you just don't get on other systems, which is what makes these videos so fun. I have been waiting so long to put these on my Switch. They are hideous. I don't understand. So usually with these third party things, there's a reason, there's a purpose, there's a method, there's a something behind why they were made. But these, the purpose of these honestly seems like we want to make the ugliest, disgustingest, most uncomfortable designed Joy-Cons. Like, that seems like the purpose here. Oh no, I like it. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> it actually looks really good. Am I crazy? It looks actually a lot more retro and nostalgic than I thought it would. It actually kind of reminds me of like the Atari, like really old Pong clone systems, like nothing official, but just that error. Do you know what I'm trying to say? The neon colors too, I thought I hated it. I thought I hated this yellow and green, but again, it feels like something that would have come straight out the 80s, like a Tron look. I was really ready to trash. Oh, wow. These are horrible. These are sharp and disgusting. These are also kind of... You kind of got to wrap your hand up to hit these in the right spot. Yeah, D-pad's not great. The buttons are squishy. The sticks are fine. I actually think these are just regular Joy-Con sticks. You know, I'm actually kind of annoyed that these buttons don't feel good. Oh, wow. I'm just realizing now that it's not actually doing anything. <laughs> they don't automatically sync. I mean, I've been filming for like, you still on? Oh my gosh, connecting has like seven steps. Okay, here we go. There we go. All right, that one wasn't too bad. So here's the thing with these ones. And another reason why I like these GameCube ones so much is some third party controllers, when you click them in, the switch will register them and sync them automatically. These fly completely solo. Again, you have to charge them separately. So even now that I've synced them and they are technically synced up and I could back out of here and do whatever I want over here. Even once I click these in, the switch won't acknowledge the fact they're clicked in. The switch doesn't know they're clicked in. It thinks it's just using these 
third party controllers that are acting like Joy-Cons. Yeah, no, I actually really like these. I don't even have anything else bad to say about them. I mean, they're cheap. I don't recommend getting them, but something about the way they look. I kind of feel like handing the other side to a friend and playing Pong on these, like an old school little handheld game system that you would get. All right, that's my video. I love doing these because I just get to sit here and have fun trying out some toys, essentially. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you had fun. If you did, smash that like button and subscribe. Thanks to the sponsor once again, ExpressVPN, for helping me fund this nonsense. Guys, that's all from me. Oh, there's something really important I needed to tell